Hello, I'm having to uh, record over this again. Crap audio time. Sometimes it uh, goes a bit belly up on the audio front, but uh, never mind, these things can't be helped. So, we're in the Skrill North. Um, so close to the Football League now. Um, some decent sides in the division, um, like Telford, FC United, and Manchester in there. Um, who else? Stockport they're knocking around as well and Tamworth as well all good teams at this level Barrow you know there's, there's a lot of good teams knocking around in this division so what did we have a look at next do, 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 where are we going general ok so I am now a club icon Boom, get me. Uh, Turton's still the captain down the bottom. Bisunga, Gurung, and Oakley favoured personnel. What are we looking at? Records, players. What are we going for now? Player of the Year was Oliver Oakley last season. I think in the last episode I mentioned that I thought he should be Player of the Year. And uh, he was, <laughs> if I remember rightly. Right, transfer wise, not been a lot of ins and outs really. kermill has gone the free, Josh Edge has gone the free, and Alan Hyde, the big loss, he's gone to Berry Town on a free. They're in our, our division, so uh, we'll come up against him this season, I believe. So uh, that was a big loss for us as he rediscovered his scoring touch. But we've brought in some cracking players, Roger Johnson on a free after his contract ran out at uh, Gillingham that is superb and uh, yeah I'm very pleased with his sign and he will go on to be a big big player for us no doubt about it I mean I have a bit of a look into the future but uh, when I signed him I knew he'd be a massive player for us and then John Stead another one massive signing 34 now but come on a free from Cambridge uh, so he's playing league football up until last season he will be a very good addition up front if he can adapt to our style of play but when you look at the fees he's raked in over the years from Huddersfield onwards a very good signing we've then brought in Russell Nolan on loan from Bolton we're now a League One side. Um, he played for us in the Southern Premier last season, so we know what he's all about. Uh, Ismail Demot Demot Agnik has come on a free transfer from Guiseley. Very poor discipline um, in real life. Very poor attitude as well. So we'll see how we're going with him. And we've brought in James Wilkinson from. Um, uh, from Chelsea, he's been, he's been released from Chelsea, was on loan at Bromley last season, so uh, hopefully it'll be a good signing for us. We've got 1.2 in the bank and 1.1 expected coming the end of the season, so that's uh, the finances looking healthy, uh, looking well, looking very healthy at the moment. So we're going to have the opening day of the season against Hyde United as our opening game. Um, you know, we know, I know them well, I've played them a lot over the years on a football manager. So um, they're the sort, you know, without being disrespectful to them, they're the sort of team you expect to beat at this level. They're the team that you should be going up against and you should be winning against. But it uh, doesn't always work out that way, does it? We all know that. We've all been there expecting to win these games and then getting beat 5-0 we've all seen it I don't know what I was talking about here I was definitely going into some detail about something so Hyde United um, not sure what uh, they've got player wise do we not do we not uh, I can say we've got Taylor oh he's picked up a knot that's why he wasn't in there Brown as well 
But I'm looking at some of these players because I'm a little bit ahead now as I'm, as I'm doing this. And uh, I look at them and some of them you forget you even had them. But uh, yeah. Sorry about that guys. My wife decided it would be a good time to phone. <laughs> She's out uh, today. So uh, <laughs> yeah. Sorry for the interruption there. So anyway, yeah, Hyde United at home, uh, away even, you know, difficult team to play, um, you never know what to expect, you, to be honest with you, I'd, I'd like to think we could beat these uh, quite easily, most, you know, nine times out of ten, not being disrespectful to them, but, uh, you know, we are a good side, but we'll soon find out. It's Friday the 13th, as I am recording the voiceover for this, I've just recorded Another episode going, John Stead, get it, seven minutes in. Kitten and crew are currently drawing one all away at um, Coventry. So I'm just continuously refreshing my Twitter, expecting goal to come up and then realise it's for Coventry to go 2-1 up after we went 1-0 up. It's what we do, we are very good at throwing leads away. Hopefully we don't um, lose. Go but I've got a feeling we will. And I'm praying to the gods that there's three goals out of nowhere in the West Ham Sunderland game. Cannot see it for shite, but uh, you never know these things. Stranger things have happened. Uh, come on, boys. John Stead now on the ball. He's going at them. He's going at them. Here comes Martin Taylor. Davison out on the wing. Gone. Oh. Well kept out by the keeper. I'm trying to keep my voice a bit quieter because when you do a voiceover narration, it picks up your voice a lot better than what it do it well, a lot more. Oof, save. Um, oh, it was a post. <laughs> Excuse me. It picks up the um, the voice a bit more, and uh, you end up with you know interference, loudness. So one nil lead at half time. You've got to be happy with that to uh, kick start your season with. Let's hope we can hold on to it. I can't actually remember what the results were in this match, in this video at all. For the life of me, I can't remember. But um, so far, so good. And hopefully we can continue with it. Hopefully... Stead and Nolan can perhaps get a goalie a piece in the second half. Oh, be nice. Go on. Oh, is it the woodwork? So if it the woodwork twice uh, and scored once, Oakley's picked up a booking. Substitution time. Demond the tack coming off for Para. Wesley Burgess coming on. Will the Beast Pisongo come on? No Sam Fox. Interesting. I'd probably do done things a little bit differently now. But uh, Oh, Coventry got a penalty. Garrett foul again. The young kid in goal, he gave a penalty away against Wickham as well when he played in the FA Cup. Well, that's 2 1 to them anyway. There's no way they'll miss a penalty against us. Disappointing. Well, ooh, oh, goal, Apara! 2 0. 2-0 Very pleasing indeed Very happy with that A nice 2 0 win on the day of the season Not so happy about I'm just waiting for confirmation that Coventry have gone 2-1 up to come through mm -hmm. Refreshing away the wind's blowing the ball off the spot. There's a delay because the wind is blowing the ball off the spot. How hilarious. So, I can't remember. I'm sure I must obviously give you Gainsborough as well. Goal 2 1. Well, that's that. That's that parade peed on. A bit harsh. I think we've played really well from the sounds of things. Haven't gone today. Couldn't really afford it with Christmas and everything but uh, never mind it's not the end of the world um, yes yeah, so Gainsborough 
at home is the next live game. 2 0 win on the opening day. So games were up next to Stanley Bridge, Ilkeston, and Northwich. It's a bit of a difficult start, to be fair. But these things are sent to trials if we want to go up. I feel a bit deflated in this video. I think it's because I've just been sat here waiting for us to throw away our one goal lead and it's happened. Never mind, never mind. And plus I'm having to be a little bit subdued due to the voice picking, the volume uh, picker upper of my voice when doing voiceovers. But, uh, Oh, excuse me. I'm tired as well. I had a busy, busy time of things of late and a difficult day yesterday, Friday the 13th. We had a lot of crap going on. Did I just say it was Friday the 13th when I was recording? I do apologise. It's not. If I did, it's not. It's the day after Friday the 13th. I'm spouting absolute nonsense there. It's my tiredness kicking in. But, never mind that, we have a game to win against the mighty Gainsborough Trinity. Formerly managed, I don't know if they still are, but they were managed at one point by Brian Little. How the mighty have fallen, you have to say, really. Although I never really thought he was a Premier League manager in the first place. But, you know. Strange ones, strange things happen. Mm. <sighs> I mean, somebody made Steve Keane a Premier League manager. It says it all, doesn't it, really? <laughs> um, and who made Neil Mellor a match reporter on Sky Sports News? Although he can't, you know, he is a million miles better than Robbie Fowler, but that's not hard. Robbie Fowler's got the personality of a cardboard box, to be fair, when it comes to match commentating and stuff. But go on. Oh, nearly scored from the off in 10 seconds there. That would have been a good one. It's good for me to do these ones where I have to add the commentary sometimes because it gets me to look back and see things and, you know, you forget certain players when they've moved on and stuff like that and it's just good to see them it reminds you refreshes your memory of when they played for you when they were doing well it's cool it's good to go back it's good to have memories <laughs> the one the tap that is ridiculously poor i'm now waiting for three one to pop up on my twitter feed all oh, over the Bloody work. If I remember rightly, without being too much of a spoiler, Gainsborough did very well this season. Very well. They were I know they were top for large portions of it. But uh, I can't, honestly can't remember where they finished up or oh, where we finished up. Oh excuse me. Sorry guys, I have a you on there. Share that one with you. What a game that Man City Arsenal game was today. Jesus, the goals galore in that one. Fantastic performances from both teams. Just City's finishing was better. I think Arsenal were unlucky with a couple of offside decisions. Very unlucky, to be fair. So, all in all, it was a cracking game for both teams. Obviously, the result was better for one team than it was for the other, but it was a fantastic game to watch. Absolutely superb game of football and a credit to the Premier League and both managers and all the players. But um, it's going to be hard to uh, cram that into the allotted time slot of match of the day. All cleared off the line, but they followed it up with a goal from Wood to Gainsborough. Won them up after or just under 60 minutes. Nick Wood with the opening goal of the game. Can we fight back? Can we bring it back again? Can the Beast Bisungu get on the score sheet? Can John Stead get on the score sheet? Crossed in. Oh, it's a goal! Chamberlain has equalised. Superb stuff from the young lad. A nice equaliser. 
don't think we really deserve to go behind, but you don't always get what you deserve in football, especially football manager. <laughs> oh, come on, get it out. Come on, Ingley. Can we get away? <gasps> oh, it's disallowed. The mutton yak. I'm going to make a late change, John Stead. So, Wesley Burgess. Will it make any difference? I very much doubt it. I doubt you even got on the pitch, to be fair. But we'll see. Boost away. I can't see him getting on. Come on. Come on. Get it up there. One last punt. Preferably to one of our players and not off the pitch like that. <laughs> Never mind. You can't win them all, can you? As much as you'd like to. All dealt with Chamber. That's it. A poor draw, according to the commentary on the bottom. A one-all draw, so you can't argue that. Two games in, four points. A very pleasing tally. So anyway, guys, thank you for that. Sorry it's been a bit of a subdued episode. Um, I do apologise for that. But please drop it with a like if you um, enjoyed the video and uh, if you're still enjoying the series. And uh, we will do our best to continue our great tradition of promotions and cups. And we will see you in the next episode. Ciao for now.